हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू एपीजी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर एच आर चोपड़ा फॉर्मर हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन साइंस पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल डिस्कस प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एंड देयर एप्लीकेशन इन लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन सेंटर्स मैनेजमेंट व्हिच इज पार्ट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन सेंटर्स मैनेजमेंट प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट are very common very important and they are existing since long there are many theories in this regard the principles have different aspects different approaches and some are traditional which are prevalent since long there are some which are based on experience there are some other principles which are mathematical which involved some symbols codes which have to be proved there are some principles which are based on human nature there are other principles which are more uh, practical and prevalent in certain types of organizations only but overall these principles are significant because we need them to apply for efficiency for economy for better working better output better products and better results principles of management are prevalent in all types of organizations especially in industries commercial organizations offices banks uh, libraries are no exception in libraries we need to use these apply these principles categorically emphatically and regularly so that the results are rewarding approaches to management there are various approaches to management the most important is traditional approach this is also known as school of customs it is one of the most commonly followed approach for management of the organizations many principles given by henry fuel underline the basic philosophy of this school there are four fundamental characteristics in this traditional style one the functions of management such as planning organizing motivating and communicating are capable of being defined emphasized and studied two there are principles or fundamental truths about organizing and management and these are very important in clarifying the study of management and in improving managerial practices three the principles of management derived from the study of management should be the starting point for research and should produce even more useful managerial theory fourth management is to a great extent an art concerned with the application of certain principles that are only to a certain degree based on scientific principles this approach analyzes management as a universal activity and environment has a great impact on the management and the managers in approaches to management there is another approach called empirical approach of management which is basically a study of managerial experiences and can be taught best by case methods here the manager keeps in view the background the past experience experience in different types of libraries experience with different of type of people experience with different type of clients and experience based on his long uh, working experience in the past maybe the same organization maybe different organization so this experience is very significant because he takes lessons from these experiences he does not repeat the failures he does not repeat what he didn't like earlier or he repeats such things which are successful or which paved way for his success in the career uh, this can be passed from one practitioner 
to another practitioner. Studies are also, also based and there are studies of success and failures as uh, the application of management is very crucial and the librarian has to take into account uh, where he failed, where he succeeded, what he concluded and what is the best under the circumstances. So, it is not only the theory, but it is more practice, more doing, more getting through the, and more uh, having the experience. Based on that, he takes decisions and he practices accordingly. Uh, this is very important and studying large number of experiences, studying large number of cases, studying large, very large number of uh, people's behavior that helps him to achieve success, achieve uh, clarity, take decisions and uh, reach the goal. Another important approach of behavior is human behavior approach. Human, human behavior approach is very important for libraries because as a manager of the library, the librarian has to deal with people, human being, the clients, human being, the staff, human being. So, the booksellers, they are human being, the suppliers, they are human being, the publishers, they are human being. So, the librarian has to deal with the people. They may be who supply the material, they may be who provide service in the library, the colleagues, they may be the clientele, the users of the library. So, since he has to deal with the people, this approach is very significant. It is based on their behavior, how they behave, what they expect, what they want, how they work, how they deal and nature of people varies from person to person. The librarian has to handle all types of people. So, he has to study the human behavior, the understanding, the nature and take decisions accordingly. Here of course, motivation is involved, good rela human relations are involved and these are based on his better understanding, better productivity and he, if, he, if he understands, the results could be revealing. So, he has to have qualities of motivation, motivating colleagues, motivating people to do, he should have leadership quality, he should have better communication techniques, he should believe in participative management and uh, he should be able to deal with the group people, group of people and that way he can be successful manager. Decision theory approach. It focuses on the concept of analyzing the situation and problems in order to make decisions. The manager is the decision maker and organization is the decision making unit. So, the basic problem in managing is to make rational decision. The major contributor of this approach is Simon who gave the following assumptions. Number one, management is essentially a decision making process. Two, the members of the organization are decision makers and problem solvers. Three, organization can be treated as a combination of various decision centers and fourthly, quality of decision affects the organizational effectiveness. In the case of libraries and information centers, for planning a new building, for providing special services to the clients or for making provisions for special members, all these activities require a careful analysis and decision making, keeping in view the library budget, equipment and staff. Not only these, in these days of information technology and literature explosion, there are many other factors. New databases are coming up, new services are expected, new uh, technology is coming up, 
there is a need to update regularly and contribute accordingly. The infrastructural facilities of the libraries and information centers are required to be updated or added or changed. All this takes lot of decision making process, lot of money and lot of input. It is very important on the part of chief librarian who is the manager of the library to take rational decision otherwise the very purpose of managing the library will be defeated. So in this way uh, the process of manager increases all the more in uh, because of the new technologies, new developments and new innovations in the field of library and information science. Another important approach to management is mathematical approach. Management is regarded as the problem solving mechanism with the help of mathematical tools and techniques. Management problems can be described in the terms of mathematical symbols and data. This approach covers decision making, system analysis and some aspects of human behavior also. Operations research, mathematical tools, simulation models, etc. are the basic methodologies to solve managerial problems. This approach is very important for certain types of managerial aspects in libraries and information centers also. Another management approach is socio-technical systems approach. This approach deals with social aspect as well as technical aspect. An organization is a combination of both social and technical systems which interact among themselves. Social system of the organization is governed by the social laws as well as by the psychological forces in the society. The technical system is governed by technological factors operating in the organization like physical setting of the work, rules, proceedings, etc. These are important and these are used in various units of the libraries and information centers. Knowledge of this aspect is also important for a librarian as a manager. Contingency approach. It is also known as situational approach. The basic idea of this approach is that there cannot be a particular management action which will be suitable for all situations. In fact, an appropriate action is one which is designed on the basis of external environment as well as internal needs. This approach has the following features. One, management action is contingent on certain action outside the system or subsystems as the case may be. Two, organizational action should be based on the behavior of action outside the system so that organization should be integrated with the environment and three because of the specific organization environment relationship no action can be universal it varies from situation to situation this approach is applicable in almost all sections of the libraries and information centers in all types of libraries throughout the world where decisions are taken keeping in view the internal needs as well as external environment. This is very important because the needs are changing every day and external environments are also changing every day. The liaison between the two is very significant and this leads to the
the approach of contingency approach of management operational management approach this approach is also significant in library management because management is the study of what the managers actually do what they perform and what they achieve management functions are universal irrespective of the type of organization or level of organization or level of management in any organization the conceptual framework of man management can be constructed on the basis of analysis of management process the central core of managing revolves around planning organizing staffing directing and controlling irrespective of the kind of organization perhaps this is very significant because it is the operational aspect what actually librarian does what he actually achieves so practical aspect is involved in this approach principles of scientific management the term scientific management was first of all given by Lewis Brandeis in 1910. According to him, the workers in the organization are economically motivated and they should do their best if they are rewarded financially. The emphasis is on maximum output and minimum strain, eliminating waste and inefficiency. Uh, Mr. Tyler has given principles based on this theory, the scientific theory. He says that uh, the scientific management gave the fundamental principles underlying the scientific approach to management, which are given as follows. One, replacing the rule of thumb method with science by finding the most efficient way. Two, obtaining harmony in group action rather than discord. Three, achieving cooperation of human being rather than chaotic individualism. Four, working for maximum output rather than restricted output. And fifth, developing all workers to, to the fullest extent possible for their own and the company's highest prosperity. Uh, Tyler's philosophy advances that the function of supervisor is one for training, one for discipline, etc. He was interested in ascertaining how to get more work out of the workers, whom he considers to be naturally lazy. According to him, this attitude was fostered by poor management. He observed that when an energetic person works with a lazy person for a few days, the former also becomes lazy, thinking, why should I work hard when the lazy fellow gets the same pay that I do and does only half as much work? Taylor proposed using scientific research method to discover the one best way to perform a job. He felt that faster work could be assured only through enforced standardization of methods, enforced adoption of best instruments available for the work adoption of good hygienic working conditions and enforced cooperation. And the FAILS principles, which are known as general principles of management, are very, are very famous. Uh, Henry Fiol was one of, of the opinion that the principles of management are flexible, which are based on his experience. He listed 14 general principles of management which are very famous and uh, these are as follows. One, division of work or specialization. This means there should be a clear division of duties, breaking jobs into smaller pieces leading to specialization. Management should be separate and distinct. This promotes efficiency in the organization. Supervisor has a better control because of dealing with a smaller range of activities for each person. In a library, the division can be 
according to type of service or type of material. Regardless of the method, it is important to consider very thoughtfully the objectives and directions of the unit. Number two, authority and responsibility. The authority that individual possesses should be equal to their responsibility. Anyone responsibility for result of task should be given the authority to take the action necessary to ensure its success. Responsibility cannot be completed in the best manner unless there is proper level of authority behind it. We can say that authority and responsibility must go together. If one is responsible for result of the task, the person should have the authority to take necessary action to ensure its success. This seems obvious, but very often only the responsibility is delegated and not the authority. Number three, discipline. It is necessary to have clearly defined limits of the acceptable behavior. Everyone in an organization should know as to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable when a rule is violated. Punishment should be given applied equally and fairly by someone who is competent and understanding. Nothing can be achieved without a level of discipline between workers and management. Discipline requires good supervision at all levels. This is applicable in case of libraries and information centers also. This principle is often difficult for a supervisor to apply because there is a tendency of leniency and human relation factor. There should be clear rules and complete obedience to behavior in the best interest of the organization. Fourth, unity of command. An employee should receive orders from only one supervisor in order to avoid confusion and conflict. It should be clear in the organization as to whom a person should be responsible for a given task. In a library, the work of collection, development, technical processing and reader services are interrelated, involving more than one supervisor. If all of them give the orders separately, it can lead to utter confusion. Hence, in such a situation, the supervisor should have consensus and only one person should give the instructions or orders. Unity of command is very important for the successful functioning of libraries and information centers too. Fifth, unity of direction. There should be only one head and one plan in order to ensure a coordinated efforts. All activities that have the same objective should be supervised by one person. A body with two heads is a monster and has difficulty in surviving. There are a number of interactive variables uh, which is given job situation sometimes cannot be avoided, but there should be minimum line of authority for a given task. For example, in libraries, bibliographical checking unit should have one supervisor. This work is performed in two departments, namely acquisition department and technical department. This principle ensures efficiency, economy and uniformity. Fourth, subordination of individual interest to general interest. The employees should place the organization's concerns before their own interest. In other words, the individual's interest should be subordinated over the general interest of the organization. Sometimes, it is difficult in certain situations in the organization, but if this principle is strictly adhered to, it would lead to general well-being of the workers in an organization. Remuneration of personnel. The pay or wages for work must be fair and adequate, which ensures satisfaction for both the employee and the employer. In a library, the task should be identified first and thereafter the appropriate staff should be recruited or hired at the established salary or remunerations. It is not a good idea to find the person 
who can do the job at the lowest possible salary. This can lead to lowering the quality of work or services in the library. Centralization. Centralization is the most desirable arrangement within the organization for formulation of policy in general and also for procedures ought to be centralized. These are important for uniformity, consistency and efficiency. Scholar chain. This means line of command from one player. The scholar chain or communication should be moved up and down according to the chain of the command. This is applicable in libraries where we have chief librarian, under him deputy librarian, under him assistant librarian, under him library assistant and so on. And it, it can go upward also and it applies effectively here. The order. The order must be in relation to the avoiding conflict and it is successful for any library. Equality, that means all the staff should be treated equal, otherwise they will not be loyal or sincere. Uh, supervisor should deal with all the staff with, uh, without being biased and they should be treated individually but as a, and not as individually but as a group. Stability and tenure of the personnel. This means the staff should be treated or recruited on permanent basis, they should be stable, they should know that they are going to continue for longer period. This way they will have initiative, they will work harder, they will be loyal and they will input more. If they are knowing that they are temporary, they are going to be removed, their interest in work will be decreased and they will not work hard which it will lead to inefficiency in the organization. Another point is initiative. So initiative should be taken by the workers and for that purpose the manager should give them the chance to take initiative. Sometimes the initiative is failed, they should not be discouraged, they should not be reprimanded, they should not be punished, rather they should be encouraged in this regard. So this way these principles are known as scientific principles, these are very much applicable and Fuel's principles are applicable in all types of organization, uh, more so in libraries too. Characteristics of not-for-profit organization. A library is one of the such organizations which are not for profit, but they are for social service, for benefit of the human being, benefit of the society and such organizations have special characteristics which can be listed as follows. Number one, intangibility. The services may not directly appeal to the services of the customers. Second, inseparability. The services are generally produced in the presence of the customers. In other words, there, if there is a customer participation in the service or production, and uh, this production and consumption are inseparable. Third is heterogeneity. The services rendered cannot be fully standardized. As a result, there should be variations in the quality of service rendered to different customers. And fourthly, perishability. This means the services may many times cannot be stored and an inventory developed for later physical distribution. In addition to the above four characteristics, of the not-for-profit organization, there are some other characteristics also which can be included such as 1. It is difficult to measure and compare the performance of services of the organization. B. It is equally difficult to inspect quality, determine and implement specifications, take samples and try in advance and also determine the cost of a service. 3. The relationship between cost that is input and benefit that is output is blurred. 4. There is no title or ownership transfer when a service is rendered. 5. Service organizations are labor and equipment incentives 
and are dominated by the professionals. Next, excellence is rare and mediocrity common and the dissatisfaction is rarely conveyed by the customers. Similarly, service organizations are generally small and operate at a single location. And finally, market forces play a less significant role in the organization. These are some of the important characteristics of a not for profit organization for which of which libraries are directly relevant. Management of libraries and information centers. Uh, it is very important that the librarian does certain roles in the libraries as a manager. These roles could be of three types. One is interpersonal role. Here he as a figurehead gives duties, assigns duties, gets the duties done from his staff colleagues in a ceremonial nature. He deals with the people and takes decision. It could be leading role, it could be liaison role, having liaison links with various colleagues. Uh, second is informational role, which involves providing information, getting information, storing information, perpetually scanning and monitoring the information for the users. Uh, this information is disseminated in specific design, in specific role and to satisfy the users who need it. The third important role of the librarian is decisional role. As a librarian, he has to take decisions as an entrepreneur looking for new ideas and adopting them for change, solving the unanticipated problems and handling dis disturbances if any, resource allocation, role of dividing work and delegating the authority. Even negotiation role is also on the part of the librarian. So he has to take decisions on the spot, delegate powers, negotiate and apply his intellect in this regard. Thus we see that the roles of principles of management are very important. They help us to achieve so many things. First of all, to increase the efficiency in the library. These principles also help us to crystallize the nature of management in the library. Thirdly, it helps us to carry on research for still better results. Fourthly, uh, it helps us to attain social objectives uh, for which the library has been established. And finally, it helps us to take realistic views of the problem so that the purpose is achieved, the goal is achieved and efficiency is increased in the library or the information centers.